person. Spectre. Lit. Uh, Lewis, that was awesome. That was pretty spectacular, wasn't it? His testimony is gonna be amazing. I got him to admit some pretty damning things, then uh... You know, we should subpoena the outside company that put together the focus groups. Yes. We should get all their records. Like it. And the names and addresses of all the people who took part. They're protected in civil actions under the privacy statute of 74. Oh, that was overturned by Kressler v. Simtek. Not if they've been compensated, as is this case right here. We're gonna win this thing! If I can't win, I won't run. What? If I can't win, I won't run. That's Chariots of Fire. Come on, don't tell me you don't know that film. You know, like what you and Harvey do, the, the movie quotes. I forgot, it's, yeah, well, it's been a long time since I saw it, you know. It's a great, great flick, though. Yeah. Anyway, all right, so, um, make sure the subpoenas are on my desk in the morning. Oh, Mike, uh, make it the afternoon, because you, you've earned it. Oh, hey there. Hey. Louis, listen, I just, um, I just wanted to say one more time how much I'm really looking forward to working with you. Aw, well, I would just like to say for the first time that you will not be working with me because I will not be giving you my jock, let alone my case. Yeah. Okay, I get it. So you're the guy? Yeah, I am the guy. No, not that guy, Louis. Definitely not that guy. You're the guy in every office who wants to piss on the new guy. You know, to mark your territory. So why don't I just walk you on down to my office, I'm gonna let you get your little piss on in my corner, and then we can move on. Oh, I've moved on. I've set up the deposition for Todd Smith tomorrow. You don't think I know about that? I don't give a shit whether you know it or not. It's my job to determine whether Todd Smith is guilty. And who do you actually think is better at determining whether a guy is guilty of insider trading, Louis? A career prosecutor for the SEC or a monkey in some Italian suit? <laughs> a monkey? Monkey. Well, you're nothing but a crowing cock. And the last cock that walked into my office learned what all the other cocks learned, that I eat cock for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Louis, you're gonna let me in that deposition tomorrow whether you like it or not. Why, because you're gonna run to Jessica? No, simply because I'm gonna tell everyone here in the office that you said you eat cock for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, that's right. It's goddamn delicious. Mm, mm, mm. Ah. So what, you think you can handle Todd Smith better than me? Well, let's just see. Let's just see what you got. Barbaric. Norma, um, the Scopefield subpoena is missing an entire class of subcontracts. Please amend it to include anything after 2010. Oh, and send Sheila a basket of flowers. Thank you, flowers, not romantic flowers. Let things take their natural course. Can't you just keep a diary like every other 12-year-old girl? Not tonight, Harvey. Just go home. What's going on? Nothing. I'm just catching up on some work. In the bullpen? Apparently, the associates don't believe that I work as hard as they do. What? Lewis. Anyone who doesn't think you're the hardest working lawyer at this firm is an idiot. You may be a dick, but as far as I'm concerned, the associates have it pretty good. Thank you, Harvey. Dick part aside. Remember when we were in here? What we had to deal with? Like it was yesterday. I could still hear Hardman ringing me out for losing that Dunridge file. You were sitting right here? I was so scared, I thought I'd be fired around the spot. I hit it. I knew it. I knew it. I had to work 48 hours straight just to recreate it. Yeah, but we killed it at trial. Yeah, if that had happened now, we wouldn't hear the end of it. I know. God forbid they have to pull one all-nighter, let alone two. It's like they think there's this law against working more than 20 hours a day. Well, there isn't. Prima donnas. I should fire them all right now and start from scratch. Lewis, I'm only going to say this once so you better enjoy it. You're the man. Harvey, did you say somebody is the man? You're the man. Thanks. The plaintiff would like to call Miss Donna Paulson to the stand. You 
you got her to come in. Just stick to the script. Harvey won't know what hit him. I... Ms. Paulson. Did Harvey Specter order you to shred that document? I declined to answer pursuant to my Fifth Amendment rights. Did you put your date stamp on that document? I declined to answer. I'm... I'm not going to ask questions that you're just going to plead the fifth to, so. Had Harvey Specter asked you to bury something five years ago, would you? He wouldn't ask me to do that. That's not what I asked. If he did, would you do it? Oh, so you're pausing, which means you're hiding something. No, I'm not. See, I think you'd do anything for him, and I know why. Is there a question? Do you love Harvey Specter? What? Do you love him? That has nothing to do with- It has everything to do with. Why'd your last boyfriend break up with you? Miss Paulson, why'd he end it with you? He thought that I prioritized my work over our relationship. Your work. He asked you to choose between him and Harvey didn't he? Yes. Who'd you choose? Harvey. Because you love him. Lewis, stop. It is not that simple. Do you love him, yes or no? Answer the question. Lewis. You're with him all the time. Your work revolves around him. Your life revolves around him. Objection. Badgering. You don't have a boyfriend, but the one you did wouldn't share you with Your him. Your Honor. Please, I just need a... Do you love Harvey Specter? Uh, Do you love Harvey Specter? That's enough. You crossed the line. Do not do this to me right now. You humiliated Donna. You kept pushing and pushing her for what? For fun? Well, you think I enjoyed that? That made me sick. You could have stopped. You think Tanner would have stopped? Travis Tanner does not give a shit about Donna Paulson. You are not Travis Tanner. I don't. You did not have I to do that. I did my job. You really want to beat me that badly? Huh? You think this is about beating you? This whole thing is about saving you. Everyone is trying to help you because you screwed up. This is all your fault. And what just happened to that beautiful woman in there, that's on you! Not me! Lewis, a part like this doesn't come around very often. You gave me a gift and I killed it because of you. Donna, please. I'm not a lawyer, Lewis. This is my chance to shine. But I'm about to lose two more glorious nights. I've never asked anyone for anything like this, but there's no other choice. Please do this for me. Please. Lewis, you're almost up. Oh, Christ, you're sweating more than Nixon. I've gone through four Elizabethan collars and a copious. OK, just breathe. You're going to be fine. No, I can't do it. Lewis, we are in the middle of the play. You'll have to ad lib, make something up, say Shylock went away, say that he went to Israel. Oh, my god. Wow, I don't even know what to... You know what? I never thought you'd be so weak. OK, why do you got to say something hurtful right oh, now? Oh, hurt. Turn that into rage. Why would I do that? You always turn hurt into rage, you idiotic piece of shit. It is what you do. OK, now I'm mad at you. Good. Now, imagine you're in court. Court? How? It's too hard with the court. Just do it, dipshit. Oh, I'm in court. God damn it, you happy now? No, I'm not happy, you idiot. Now, you're in court, and you're enraged, and you are fit to kill. Now, do you see that audience out there? That's your jury. They're a bunch of morons. Yeah, they're beneath you, aren't they? They're beneath everybody. What else? They're a bunch of civil servants who can't keep up with what I'm saying. You have absolutely total contempt for them, don't you? I want to rip out their stupid brains from their stupid heads. Exactly. Now get out there and make your case. Unless, of course, you're a pussy and you're meant to play plaque your whole life. 3,000 ducats! Lewis, what are you doing here? I'm waiting for Harvey. Harvey's not here. Then you'll have to do. Look, 
Louis, I know you've been through a lot, but Harvey's gonna... I don't give a shit what Harvey's gonna do. Okay, you're scaring me. You know what an Oscar looks like? What? Academy Award. Bald guy. I mean, of course, we all know what it looks like. But especially you, you're an actress. It's the highest honor in your field. I mean, of course, you don't need to be told what it is. What are you talking about? See, the highest academic honor at Harvard Law is the Order of the Quaff. You don't get a trophy. You get three things. You get a parchment to hang on your wall, Medal to wear at graduation. And this. Now, this key doesn't say order of the quaff. Doesn't say anything. It's just a symbol. What does that have to do with Harvey? It doesn't. It has to do with Mike. You know what, Lewis? It's been a long day. It's Can about we... to get longer. See, Mike asked me about this. And I thought he was. <laughs> I thought he was trying to get my mind off of my problems, but then he did it again. And it got me to thinking. Mike graduated magna cum laude. He's in Order of the Quaff. But he didn't recognize this. So he forgot a stupid key. Mike Ross doesn't forget anything. See, the reason he didn't recognize this was because he never got one because he didn't go to Harvard. Lewis, we've been down this road before. Mike is in the Harvard database. But he's not in the yearbook. And according to his credit report, his address during his law school years was in New York. He even paid rent the first of the month in person. Well, I'm sure there's a an... Sit down! Last year, you told me not to tell Sheila about Mike's file. You acted like you cared about me. You didn't give a shit about me. You cared about you and Harvey no. and Mike no. and Jessica. Lewis, that's not true. Well, let's call Sheila right now. I know all of the numbers by heart. I mean, she may not be interested in me anymore, but she will definitely be interested in a fraud claiming that he went to Harvard. I'm sorry. You're sorry? You've been lying to me since the day Mike Ross arrived. I knew Harvey and Jessica never really accepted me, but I thought you were different. I thought you were my friend. I am your friend, Lewis. No, you're not. And don't you ever say that to me again. Where are you going? To see your friend, Jessica. <laughs> Lewis knows. Lewis. I know you're a stickler for the rules, so I figured I'd just come by to return my ID. You want an explanation? I want to see you perp walk through the bullpen with your pretty little jacket draped over your handcuffs. But until then, yeah, I'll take an explanation. When I found out the truth about Mike Ross, it had already been done. By Harvey. Right after he made senior partner over me, that's when he hired the fraud. That's the correct timeline, right? Yes. So instead of turning him in, you cover it up. Lewis. And the one time that I do something, you don't cover it up at all. You throw me to the wolves. I saved you from the wolves. I ask you for the smallest gesture, just to allow my career to continue with dignity. And you couldn't muster the tiniest shred of compassion. What do you want me to say? I want you to tell me you're a liar! And a hypocrite! But I want you to say you're sorry. I 
am a liar. And I am a hypocrite. But I will not say I'm sorry. Because I did what I did to protect this firm. Well, it looks like the captain's about to go down with her ship. Bullshit. You want something? Oh, I told you. I want to see you in, in handcuffs? If that were true, the police would be here instead of you. No. You wanted to see me squirm before asking me for what you really want. I'm not going to give you the satisfaction. So you might as well spit it out. You asked me what I wanted once before, and I told you. And then you told me that I couldn't have it. But now I can. Pearson. Spectre. Lit. <laughs>